Uh, the gentleman from Tennessee, uh, Mr. Cohen, is recognized for his question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Attorney General, you were asked a question earlier, uh, which reminded me, you smiled when the question was asked, kind of a smile, and, and it reminded me of a nice article I read on the web this morning that said that President Obama, uh, when he engaged in activities over the weekend, going to Alabama, going to Florida, dealing with uh, Mr. Trump at the dinner and all those things, that he had a poker face. Now, it's been said, I believe, that you and the President have played poker together. Is that correct? Uh, no, we've never played po never played poker with the president. I, I don't thought know the president plays poker. I don't you don't know that. I don't know. No. Okay, well, let me ask you this: you you seem to think that maybe you didn't know whether it was skill or luck in poker. Do you think Phil Ivey is just lucky? He's the world's greatest poker player. Do you think he's lucky in Annie Duke, or do you think they have some skill involved? I, I'm not sure. I know who Miss Phil Ivey is, but uh, I'm sure there is some degree of skill that is involved in, in this. Some degree. I I'm not a poker player myself. You're not. Well, okay, I, I didn't realize that. You might become one because it's one of the rapidly increasing popular activities in America, and it's been going on for years. And people used to play it at tables like in the kitchen. They play poker. Now they do it on the Internet because there are things like you just, it's amazing the things you do on the Internet. I've, I've even got one of these. I'm moving into the age, and you do those. I've got one, too. Yeah, and you pay bills, and you do things you used to not do there, but you do them. Do, do, you, do you think we really ought to be spending a lot of time in trying to deal with internet poker and or do you think we should find a way to make it legal to tax it and to, and to bring revenue and to help pay for the folks that Mr. Sensenbrenner wants to take out of your budget? Well, I mean, we have to enforce the law as it exists and there is there are laws on the books um, with regard to um, internet gambling that we have to enforce. We recently announced an action in the Southern District of New York um, it is for, I guess, Congress to decide what the law is going to be, and then we will um, enforce those laws. Well, I, I agree with you generally. I mean, I understand, like, you know, there were civil rights laws in the 40s and 50s that the government had to defend, and then maybe 10, 12, 15 years later, after, after Thurgood Marshall's arguments and the court's uh, agreement, that they realized those weren't valid laws, and the law changed because society changed, people's thinking changed. Same thing with DOMA. There are certain laws and things change, and you change, the, even though it's the law Congress passed, there's a change in the cultural lag, and it kind of catches up, and the people's perception of it changes. Some of the same people that gave us DOMA, most of them, gave us the laws against Internet poker. Uh, it was that family's value crowd uh, that, uh, yeah, and uh, quotes, and uh, they... Uh, they gave us those laws, but sometimes they might not have been the right laws. And, and you, some of Mr. Forbes's folks, who you could be prosecuting some of those obscenity cases with some of the people you've otherwise got concerned with some of these laws concerning Internet poker. And there are priorities. We can't do everything. Don't you think that maybe in the priority range that Internet poker would be down at the bottom of the level and beneath obscenity and hardcore pornography and child rape and things like that? Well, there are a whole variety of things that we have responsibilities for. Uh, you know, the case, cases that we brought, for instance, in the Southern District of New York um, involve pretty substantial amounts of money and big financial institutions, and I think those cases are appropriate. There are going to be some other cases in this area that aren't really federal cases because they're not really large enough. Um, people are not, the degree of harm is not um, serious enough. So, you know, even within a certain... Um, class of cases, certain ones are going to be worthy of our attention and then some will not be. Did, did the Southern District coordinate with the Criminal Division or you particularly about the policies of your office which have been kind of in uh, flux uh, underlying the decision to effectively criminalize poker but going after these folks? And yeah, the Southern District worked with the Criminal Division, um, worked with Maine Justice in you know, the formulation of that case, though the primary responsibility was in, was in New York. We're, we're coming down on time, which is my fault, but I'm, uh, freedom's a big issue with me and the opportunity to do things. And a lot of people, the cocaine and, and crack sentencing, we got made progress, but is the department saying that we're asking for sentences that are maybe on the lower range for those people that were indicted before the law changed? What I've uh, told our prosecutors is I've given them discretion so that they ask for sentences that are appropriate looking at the facts of each individual case. The department is going to make up, we're going to take a position with regard to whether or not the uh, law should be made retroactive 
before the Sentencing Commission. But while we are still in that process, I've asked my prosecutors to make sure that we only ask for sentences that are, are, are appropriate and consistent with the facts. Has there expungement is an issue I'm interested in, too. Do you believe we should have, for like low-level crimes, whether uh, misdemeanors, an expungement law on the federal level whereby after, say, seven years, a first offender for a nonviolent offense could get the record expunged and maybe get a job? I think that's certainly something that I'd want to work with um, the committee on and, and, and consider. It's certainly something we had here in Washington, D.C. when I was a judge um, for a really relatively small um, number of offenses, obviously nonviolent, um, so that the stigma that goes with a, a, a conviction, especially for younger people, um, might not harm their abilities um, to get meaningful employment, to otherwise make themselves productive members of society. And so the ability to have that as a tool in the federal system is certainly something I'm, worth, I'm willing to consider. And as the red lights come on, and I'm going to, the, the hypothetical, yield back the remainder of my time that doesn't exist, but I'm going to bring up, if I can, in the extra 30 seconds that I know the chairman's going to give me. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for an additional 30 seconds. Thank you. I'm going to bring up an issue that the chairman wouldn't want me to bring up, which is the fact that uh, in that case, he's not recognized for an additional 30 seconds. <laughs> the Memphis Grizzlies beat the San Antonio Spurs 4-2. to two. Uh, I know you play basketball with the president. Has he caught on to Zach Randolph and the Grizzlies of being a, a, a dynasty in the making? The time has definitely expired. <laughs> uh, the, 